morning. Uh, today is Monday morning, uh, July 17th, 2017. Uh, we're off on another cruise, a fairly short one. Uh, two nights, if you don't count, last night on the uh, morning in the marina. Um, so we got an early start this morning. Uh, started off about 5.30. Uh, the wind was coming from the east, it seemed, uh, and I tried to sail out of the uh, out of the little harbor there, Pine Island Marina, uh, but there wasn't enough wind to do that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, it has picked up a little out here. Uh, there's little ripple, ripple ripples in the water, and we're actually making a bit of progress, a knot maybe. Uh, and, uh, well, the forecast today was for light and variable winds this morning, which is a euphemism for, you know, not much. Uh, and this afternoon is supposed to be um, 5 to 10 from the southeast, uh, which is not the normal direction. Southwest, southwest is much more common. So we're going to take uh, the opportunity uh, to, uh, to try for a destination that would ordinarily be uh, more difficult to sail to so we'll see how that goes. It's about 630 in the morning now, so we've been uh, Underway for about an hour So once again, uh, Pine Island Marina is up in this corner of the map tech chart and what we're going to do today is uh, cross Long Island Sound over to uh, the area of Little Gull and then turn, uh, and well, I'm not sure exactly what route we're going to take, but our, um, I think our goal for today would be to get over here to Orient Harbor. Uh, so that will be a southwest uh, route, but with the southeast wind, I think we should be able to make that. We'll see how it goes. So it's just a few minutes later now, and uh, and our patience has been rewarded. Uh, so we got a sail full of wind, actually both sails. The jib is uh, pretty full too, and we're doing about three knots, so that's much better. Well, I guess it's going to be that kind of morning. So <clears throat> conditions have changed again. The wind has dropped off, not completely. Uh, we're still making a couple of knots, so that's fine. Uh, but the visibility has gone to, oh, a couple hundred feet, I'd say. Uh, there's blue sky overhead. So at least there's that. Um, so we're still continuing on uh, out towards Little Gull. Uh, this route... Uh, should keep us clear of most ferry routes, which would be further to the west. Uh, so as long as a submarine doesn't decide to come in or out, uh, I should be okay with most traffic. We've got the AIS, so uh, that'll alert me to some boat traffic anyway. Well, the fog went away, uh, but the wind didn't come back. Um, so it didn't go away either. So we had enough wind, so we made it out to the race actually earlier uh, than we wanted to. Uh, it's about nine o'clock now, slack tide is uh, about noon, and so this is about uh, peak tide. <laughs> and uh, the current is taking me southward. Uh, well, actually the, the chart says the peak current is about four knots. So I'm I'm headed west, and I'm I'm the course I'm making is uh, east of south, uh, and where that's taking me is into some rough water. Uh, so uh, to avoid that, um, 
I guess discretion is a better part of valor, and we'll start the engine. It's about 20 after 10 now, and uh, uh, the excitement um, appears to be over. <laughs> so we are past Little Gull Island uh, through uh, any kind of unsettled seas uh, and uh, safely transitioned into Gardner's Bay. Uh, let me show you what happened on the chart. So here is our track line from uh, Pine Island Marina out to the area of um, Gull Island and the light that's on that and because of the uh, current and lack of uh, wind at least initially we were well to the east of that track putting us out closer to the race and when I got out here and saw the rough water here I started the engine to avoid that uh, <clears throat> uh, but uh, the, the the current there because I hit it at exactly the wrong time was uh, going southeast at uh, close to four knots so it was a struggle to uh, to avoid being sucked into that uh, but I did manage to make my way west and uh, especially at this time of day, uh, the area is very popular with lots of fishing boats who uh, maneuver in erratic ways. But um, we made our way, because uh, it looked like the water was smoother over here, uh, near Little Gull. And so that's a trend I'll have to see if I can verify holds. But, uh, so we're, we're down in this area in here now, um, <clears throat> southeast of Little Gull, and... Uh, and things are relatively placid maybe a little too placid <laughs> we are making way uh, so that the uh, autopilot is uh, managing to keep a course although it's struggling a bit to do that so uh, since we're once again in no hurry uh, we'll go back to sailing and continue on towards Orient Harbor Well, here we are, anchored, safe and sound in harbor, and I'm uh, enjoying a cold beer and some cheese and crackers. Uh, it's about 3.30 uh, now. We got in, uh, dropped the anchor about 3 o'clock. Uh, so I guess uh, before I get too comfortable here, I should uh, uh, show you how we finished up the day. Uh, after leaving 
little gull. Uh, we came down uh, this track line to this major buoy uh, 1GI or Gardner's Island which is over here. Uh, and then we followed this track in black down to the Shelter Harbor area and then up into Orient Harbor and actually where we are now is Halleck Bay. I'm going to move to another chart uh, that shows this area in greater detail. So here again is Orient Harbor. Uh, just to orient you. Haha. -ha. Uh, and I have stayed in here, uh, and there's a nice anchorage in this area. Uh, I didn't make a video of that particular trip. Uh, but there's this little passageway into Halleck Bay, and uh, there's a couple of uh, reviews of this uh, area as an anchorage. Obviously not for deep draft boats. Um, uh, coming in here, there was uh, four feet, uh, a little more than four feet of water uh, under my depth sounder. Um, so, uh, you know, not a lot of water. It's about half tide, so uh, at low tide, there'll be about a foot and a half uh, less than that. Um, so we're, we're somewhere out, uh, behind Orient Beach here, below the B in, in Halleck Bay, in a little under six feet of water, uh, and it seems very pleasant. Well, I guess I'll let you see. So it's not all that well protected from wind, uh, there's some... Not very tall trees over there. That's the back side of Orient Beach. We're looking south. And, you know, this isn't going to show up real well for you, but we have a 360 degree uh, view of a fairly large body of water, uh, almost none of which is over um, six feet deep. A couple of pockets here and there and the channel coming in, uh, which accounts for its basic emptiness, which is why we chose it. <laughs> so I'm not sure it's really worth the, uh, the aggravation uh, to get in here, but now we can say we did it. And there we are back to the south, and there's a pretty good sized osprey nest over there. No evidence of light at the moment. So there is a pretty stiff breeze here. I'm not, uh, I did set my anchor alarm, uh, as I always do, although I could drag a long way before I hit anything, but it'd be best to know, know about it. Um, so, uh, I guess I'll, uh, work on finishing my beer and cheese and crackers, uh, and eventually think about what to do, uh, about dinner. Now, it is not my intention uh, to have um, a new boat project to show you every time I, I do a cruise. Um, but as it happens, I, <laughs> I did uh, recently make a couple of uh, enhancements. And, uh, well, while I'm here, I might as well show you. So the first is uh, I replaced um, the rear straps on the bimini with uh, semi-permanent struts. So uh, the um, strap is now kind of out of the way. Uh, pretty soon I'll, I'll just cut that off. But here is the, uh, the strut that replaces it. So of course there's one of these on each side. And there are five components on each side. Uh, there's uh, two of these, which is a piece that has a hinge here, so it can wrap around uh, the uh, 
existing piece of the uh, bimini here, uh, you know, without having to saw it into it or something. And then it's got uh, a hinge pivot, and then there's two of these, uh, which are end sockets, which then go on the, the bar. So, uh, it, it has to be pieced together, but it's not complicated. So, you know, based on not much, uh, I decided that uh, this piece would be 14 inches uh, above the existing uh, bottom bracket on the side. And I let the, the position of um, the rear hoop uh, be determined by the existing strap. So I set that up first and then uh, and then I just measured the distance between the caps and allowed for the amount you know that it goes in uh, and came up uh, well one side was 14 inches and the other side was 13 and a half inches uh, of this tubing um, so uh, the, the reason for all this is that uh, w without <clears throat> the, the the strut uh, the, the bimini could only flop <laughs> if it wasn't strapped in it could flop uh, forward, in which case it would lean against the cabin top and impede access uh, forward pretty seriously. Or it could flop backwards, in which case actually what it would come up against is uh, the uh, winches. Um, and, and that put a lot of uh, torque on the, the whole setup and probably wasn't healthy for it. So. Uh, this way, um, well, there really, really only is one non-deployed position, and that's with it uh, folded back. Um, I'll show you that. So here it is, uh, kind of like a Volkswagen, you know, convertible top uh, folded back. It's um, so it's now it's resting on those solid struts on each side, and it's not as out of the way as it could be. Um, I don't know, I, I've got a cover that uh, this can all go in. Uh, takes a few minutes to put it on, or, or you know, I can just wrap um, a piece of rope around there quickly and uh, get a, a little more out of the way than this. But it's much better than it was uh, before, and I can duck under there and get to the to the motor uh, in a hurry if I have to. So I consider that to be a pretty easy uh, yet significant improvement in usability. So the second improvement has to do with the in-mast furling uh, mainsail. Now, I'm a big fan of the in-mast furling mainsail, um, but I'm not a big fan of the way that General Boats uh, routes the control lines, uh, the outhaul line and the furling line uh, for the main. Uh, uh, the general boat's approach is to have uh, both lines entirely uh, on the boom, uh, which makes them difficult to access. And this is um, true particularly in my case because I tend to sail with the, the bimini up all, most of the time. So uh, th that makes accessing the boom uh, difficult and the outhaul line was particularly egregious. Uh, so that's the one I addressed first. The, the, um, with, with the bimini up, the only real way to work the outhaul line is to stand on the uh, rear cockpit seat um, and, and, and then work on the line at the end of the boom and, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, it always struck me that's a that's a recipe for falling overboard. Uh, so I'll show you um, how I've modified that. Okay, uh, so this is the red line is the outhaul line, and uh, this part isn't changed. The bitter end of the uh, outhaul line uh, is stopped here at the end of the boom, and then goes forward to a car of uh, Stan's manufacturer there, uh, 
<coughs> that's attached to the clue and has a block on it. And then the line comes back again to the end of the boom. And in the general boat's way, uh, that line would go through this block, straight down through the boom. And then there's a piece I've removed here. I'm sorry that I haven't provided you a before and after, but basically there's a piece of uh, starboard uh, that wraps around and attaches to the boom and has a, uh, a cam cleat on it. Uh, <clears throat> so if you want to uh, manipulate the uh, this line, uh, you need to get to the end of the boom, which is not always convenient. So what I've done uh, is instead of taking the line through this block and down, I've mounted a cheek block here. That's a 20 millimeter uh, cheek block for quarter inch line. Uh, so it comes through there and then goes all the way up the boom again. And to another block that's attached uh, to, uh, well, I don't know if that has a name, the, the general area of the gooseneck, uh, another big piece of starboard. And I'm going to duck down here below the pop top. And that goes down uh, currently uh, to uh, the handrail. Uh, but this is a, a temporary measure. Um, uh, what I, now that I'm pretty sure this is going to work, uh, what I actually want to do is have a, another block here at the base of the mast somehow. I'll work out the details and I'll move this block, uh, back here and it'll be more out of the way that way. Uh, this is attached to the handrail with a little continuous loop of Amsteel or Dyneema, which just seemed a non-invasive way. Uh, of doing that uh, <clears throat> so and then that runs back to a new uh, cam cleat that I mounted to the rear of the cabin right next to the one for the uh, boom topping list um, and uh, I must say uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure with all these extra pulleys uh, and whatnot uh, how well that was going to work but it works very well. I'm real pleased with it. Um, so I'll be looking to do something similar with um, <clears throat> the furling line, but that one's more complicated. Uh, and for, for one major reason is uh, I'm going to need a longer furling line. This, uh, this line was easy to replace the, to replace the furling line. Um, I'm going to have to uh, get to the spool when I don't think I can do that well, without dropping the mast and pulling it out of the bottom of the mast. So uh, that might not happen uh, until next season, but um, well, it's some progress anyway. So here is dinner for this evening. So this is uh, one of those dehydrated backpacking meals, you may recall from... Uh, last year's videos. Uh, that's chicken cacciatore from a recipe that I tried to develop myself and well, wasn't really all that successful at. It turns out dehydrating chicken is problematic. Anyway, uh, and there's some fresh peas in there just to uh, add a little flavor and color. And we've got a garden salad uh, not from our garden, but there's cucumbers and um, tomatoes um, from our local farm stand, and a little bit of wine. Uh, you know, since I've d discovered that it's really impossible to keep uh, ice cubes um, very long in an ice box, uh, I'm I'm researching other ways to <laughs> have have cold drinks. So there's a little bit of wine in a uh, insulated tumbler, and that you know seems to uh, keep the wine uh, chilled uh, long enough for me to drink it. You just have to remember not to fill it all the way to the top. Uh, so that's dinner for tonight. I didn't show you this out in the cockpit because out there uh, the sun is brutal. So uh, we're hiding in here in the shade. And so we've arrived at the 
magic hour. Well, it's several hours, actually. Uh, so, dinner's been it, and the dishes have been done. Um, so now we just relax. Listen to some music. I can't play music. Um, the YouTube police would yell at me. <laughs> Copyright violation. Anyway, but but uh, when I'm not filming, I'm listening to music, and I have various things to read. Um, and... Uh, We'll watch the sun go down. See you tomorrow.